In this video, we're going to be talking about graphing techniques, specifically transformations. So the way transformations works is that you take um, an existing graph, which we usually call either like an original function or a parent function, and you do some kind of modifications to it or transformations. And by doing this, you end up with a new graph. Okay. So our original or parent functions, these are just a few of them, but these are the ones that we usually focus on. We have the linear function, the absolute value function, square function or quadratic, and then a square root function, cube or cubic function, and then a cubed root function. So what's going to happen is we're going to use these as like our basis to graph new graphs, but these are like the original shapes. And so what's going to happen is things like this parabola here, it's going to shift up or down, left or right, and it's going to stretch or get um, more narrow. And so those are the ideas of simple modifications or transformations. All right, so the types of transformations are the following. We have vertical, horizontal, reflection, and then stretching or compressing. So a vertical transformation occurs when you have your function and you add or subtract a constant, we'll say to the outside of the function. And we'll go through an example in a minute so you'll see what I mean here. Now, um, in all these cases, we're going to assume that C is a positive constant. So uh, on, we'll go with um, something greater than one. So like maybe C is two or three or or something like that, but just not a fraction. So if we take our original function and we add some constant to it, it's going to take that graph and it's going to shift it up whatever this number is. So if it's 3, our original graph will move up 3 units when we draw it. With the minus here, it will go down 3 units. Horizontal transformations are very similar, except for if we subtract the number C, notice this is happening inside with the X, so this is going to affect the horizontal movement. So x minus our constant, it's actually going to do a shift to the right. And then if we say x plus c, it's going to be a shift to the left. So I know that might seem a little counterintuitive, especially based on the vertical transformation, plus mint up, minus mint down. But here, you basically are actually thinking about what real number does x have to be to go back to the original. So, or think of it like a zero point. So if our number, I'll just write this for a quick example. If originally we had f of x and now we have f of x minus 2, you're basically asking yourself about the x. What number does x have to be to go back to the original? Well, it would have to be a 2, or let's say back to 0. So 2 minus 2 would get us back to a situation where we had f of x or x plus nothing. Okay, so you're kind of thinking about the x value. I know it looks like a minus your number means go to the right. Um, that's the idea of it, but essentially it's it's asking more so about the x value. So just remember, if something is inside, if some number is inside with the x like this, so you're subtracting or adding a number here, minus means to the right, and adding means to the left. Okay, so those are our vertical and horizontal transformations. Now our reflections are basically how the graph might flip. So you can either flip um, vertically or horizontally. So the minus on the outside of the function here, that does a reflection or flip vertically. So what you have is you have your original graph and it does some kind of vertical flip. Okay, so it might be across the x-axis, some kind of vertical flip. If your minus is inside with the x value, so anytime you're doing something just to the x part, that's going to affect horizontal movement. So minus on the inside is going to be a reflection horizontally or a horizontal flip. Okay, and then the last type of transformation is a stretch or compression. Now there's four listed here, but essentially two of them are similar to the other two. So if we multiply our function by a factor of c, again we're assuming c is a positive um, constant greater than 1, then that's going to shift our graph vertically. I'm sorry, stretch it vertically. And if we multiply by a, a fraction, we'll say that this number here is between 0 and 1. So some fraction here it's going to compress vertically. So uh, what's happening is you have your original graph and it's going to think of it as like getting pulled or stretched vertically for this um, number C that's bigger than 1. If your number is a fraction between 0 and 1, instead of stretching vertically, you're actually compressing vertically and so your graph is actually going to get wider. So this is narrower or skinnier because you're pulling it, you're stretching it vertically, and this one is wider. Okay, is actually going to end up in a wider result. Now these two, notice that the constant moved inside with the x. 
So whenever the, something's happening with the X, we assume or we call it some kind of horizontal transformation. So if our constant, our whole number bigger than one here is multiplying X, then it's a horizontal compression. So notice if I have something and I compress it horizontally, it's moving in and it's getting more narrow and essentially that's the same thing as stretching vertically. That's also making something more narrow. And then here, if we multiply by our fraction between zero and one, it's gonna be a stretch horizontally. So you're gonna be like pulling outward horizontally, which is the same as a vertical compression. So if I'm pulling something out horizontally, that's the same as like smashing it or compressing it from above and below, from the vertical sides. All right, so let's take a look at an example. We're going to graph three different functions, um, this time by p plotting points, and then I'll use this to show you that you could have done it much faster using the idea of transformations. So our original function is going to be f of x equals absolute value of x. So notice there's no transformations happening to this. This was one of our original or parent functions. So we're just gonna plot five points to get a good accurate graph. And so, um, if we take the absolute value of x, so notice I have my table set up here, one for each of the graphs, and I'll tell you in just a moment why I picked these x values. Let's plug in so absolute value of 0 is 0, absolute value of 1 is 1, 2 is 2, absolute value of negative 1 is 1, and negative 2 is 2. Okay, so why I picked these five values, and if you notice I picked them for the next function, but not for the third one, for h of x, it's because basically for this shape, for this, if you remember this is a V-shape, we want to pick this middle point of our table to be like the center point or the low point um, of the V-shape, the center of the V. And so zero, zero is this, this middle point where there's a reflection or a, some kind of symmetry about that point. Notice there's a one here and a one here, two here and a two here. And you'll notice that with all three of these graphs, in particular this last one as well, um, even though I change these x values, okay? So let's plot those five points, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, okay? And now it always is good to know the shape of the graph. Um, I mean, we already plotted those so we could see it's going to form a V, but it helps to know that it was going to be a V ahead of time. So there's our first one. Now our second graph is going to be g of x, and so all we're doing is taking our absolute value of x and then adding 3 to it. So 0 plus 3 is 3. It's a little hard to see with this uh, marker, just a moment. So 3 is 3. Uh, absolute value of 1 plus 3 is 4. 2 is going to give us a 5. And then negative 1, absolute value turns it to 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. And we're going to get a 5 here as well. Notice the symmetry like I mentioned before. Here's our, our centermost point, we have a th our 0, 3, and then on the other sides of 3 is 4 and 4, and then 5 and 5, so we still have the symmetry. So let's plot those points, 0, 3, 1, 4, negative 1, 4, and then 2, 5, and negative 2, 5. Okay, now before we move on and graph g, or I'm sorry, h of x, take a look at g of x and how it transformed from the original green f of x. So the green one, the original without any transformations, if you can imagine picking it up and moving it and then placing it somewhere to get blue, just think what you would have to do. I would have to pick up green, pick it up off the, the board here, and move it up one, two, three units and put it down to get the blue graph. Notice this point moved up three, this point moved up three, this point moved up three, and they all did. So that's a vertical transformation, and we could tell based on the previous um, information we looked at when we had our function plus a constant here, we moved up that amount, okay? So you can maybe guess what's gonna happen with this one. We talked about this just a moment ago. Notice this, is hap this number minus two is happening inside with the x, so this is gonna be a horizontal transformation. And remember, minus meant to the right, so this should move us to the right two units from the original green graph. Okay, so if I take two, so I'm down here at my table for a h of x, two, plug it in, absolute value of two minus two is zero, plug in three, three minus two absolute value is one, four is going to give us a two, absolute value of one minus two is negative one, absolute value of that is one, and we get a two. So see the symmetry again. 
one, one, two, two. So this middle point in each of these tables, the middle point that you want to pick is basically the value that's going to give you a zero um, in the in the part with the x when you plug it in. So notice if I plug in two right here, this part that has an x turns into zero. If I plug in a zero here, the part that has an x turns into zero. If I plug in zero here, the part that has the x turns into zero. Okay, let's plot these points. So two zero, three one, four two, and then one one, and zero two. And this is exactly what we had just mentioned. This is our same graph as the green. Notice the shape is the same in everything. The same green graph, but if I could pick it up and move it to get purple, I'd have to pick it up and move it one, two units and put it back down. So notice every point moved two to the right. One, two, this point went one, two, this point went one, two, and they all did. Okay, so this is an example. We plotted the points to show you that it actually works, but you can graph much faster if you just recognize that the original absolute value of x needed to move two to the right. The original absolute value of x needed to move up three. Okay, so let's take a look at another example. Okay, in this example, we're going to graph the original function f of x equals x squared as well as a transformation of that function. Um, now, we can do the point plotting, but let's see if we can do it with just the idea of transformation. So, first for f of x equals x squared, let's just plug in five values. So, we're going to do 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 4. Actually, we can do a few more points. So, let's see, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. Okay, and then we know this is going to be a parabola. We can just mirror our points over here, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4, negative 3, 9. Okay, and we connect them with our parabola shape. And this is going to be our original or parent function. Okay. Now, let's see what's happening to g of x. And we notice, hopefully, that there's two transformations going on here. There's this minus, which is a reflection, and then the two, the, this co uh, coefficient here, um, is going to do some kind of either stretch or compression. So the minus, this is actually considered to be on the outside, because it's not like inside the parentheses with the x. So this is going to be a vertical reflection. So this minus sign right here is going to take, so far, our parabola and flip it vertically. So it's going to now turn into a downward facing parabola. Okay, so that's the first transformation. Now, we're also going, this two, think of it again, is on the outside. It's not inside the parentheses with the x. It's not inside there. It's on the outside. So every y value, basically, once you square your number and you, you have some output, some y value, so for example, the y value here was 4, the y value here was 9, every y value is then going to get multiplied by 2. Okay, so everything's going to basically get bigger faster. So if we go from this point, first of all, 0 squared is still 0, even if we multiply it by a negative 2. Now we know we're flipping down. Let's just plug in this one point here um, to see what happens. So what used to be a 1, 1, now if we take 1 and square it, we still get out a 1, but that's this part. The minus is making us flip downward, so we know it's going to move down here. And then what used to be a 1 is getting multiplied by 2. So what is now 1 is now multiplied by a factor of 2. Okay. The same thing is going to happen with this y value of 4. What used to be a 4, we know it's down here because of the minus, is going to get multiplied by 2, so it's going to go all the way down to 8. So 2, 4, 6, 8. So 2, comma 8. And then what was 9 is now going to turn into 18 way down here. Okay a little bit off, um, maybe even lower than this, a little bit off the grid here. And then this is going to happen the same thing on the other side. We're going to flip down because of the minus and everything gets multiplied by 2. So this becomes a 2, this was negative 8, and we go all the way down here to where we imagine negative 18 to be, and then we draw our parabola. Okay. <clears throat> Now, if you can see it, I know it's not that easy to tell based on my drawing, but the green is slightly more narrow than 
the the black original one so I know my drawings not the best to be able to tell this but if you can imagine the black one is some amount of wideness here and it's a little bit narrower there at this point it's some amount of wideness there and then it's actually more narrow down there so it is in fact getting stretched this original black ones get stretched um, by a factor of two to form this new green one so it is more narrow than the original one okay or you can think of it as getting smashed in or compressed horizontally all right so for this last example we're going to do it pretty quickly because of um, the fact that we know how the graph of absolute value looks and we've done a few of these already and we we have an idea of what the transformations do to the graph so our original you have to just kind of look at this and say what would happen if I take all these extra things away well I would take away the minus sign the minus one and the minus three so the original is absolute value of X so we know that that's that V shape right here and we know that um, the standard points that we had originally plotted were one one two two and so on so let me just plot that one real quick just to remind you and you can see how the new one will transform from this one so there was our original absolute value of X okay so now there's three transformations happening to this new one. The minus is going to be, notice it's outside of the part that has the x. It's not inside with x. So the minus is going to do a vertical transformation, a vertical reflection. So our, our v shape, our absolute value, is going to go down like this because of the minus. Now, this happening number happening inside with the x, remember that's horizontal so that's going to be a horizontal movement and minus one means one to the right so we already are going to flip downward we're going to take this V flip it down and move it one to the right and then this minus three on the outside here makes us move down three so our original centermost point we take this point we flip it down but there's nowhere to flip because it's already at the bottom because think of this if if this was our line of reflection when we flip down from here this this center point stays where it's at okay so that one's gonna stay with the flip then this makes us move one to the right and this makes us move down three. One, two, three. so there's our new original like center of the V then this point here is gonna get flipped down here so watch this again one one is gonna flip down think of it as getting flipped across this x-axis so one one gets flipped down here we know it goes one to the right and down one two three and we plot it there okay then let's take this point two two it flips across the x-axis so what used to be two two is now two negative two so this point flips here it moves one to the right and down one two three okay and then we can do that with the other uh, two points or you can just mirror this shape here but let's go ahead and do it with these last two points so we flip down okay flip vertically move one to the right and down one two three okay and then the last point that we've plotted we flip over the x-axis or vertically and we move over one and down one two three okay and let's connect our points into our shape of our absolute value graph and so notice this is the same exact shape so that's the idea of transformations you're taking this original shape and you're just modifying it so it's the same shape it's flipped downward because of the minus it's shifted one unit to the right so this centermost point moved over one so it's one away horizontally because of this and then it got shifted everything down three so flipped over one to the right and down three to get this new graph.